Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to show you how to write your own functions using Stylus. Maybe the built-in functions just aren't doing it for you, or maybe you have some piece of functionality that you need to add to your CSS code that you can do so with your own function. So we're going to show you what kind of things you can do with your own functions and what tools you have to accomplish the things you need to do. So let's get started right now. So we've shown you how to use some basic functions. Now let's talk about how you can create your own functions. And we're gonna go through some really super basic examples so you figure out how they can work. And then it might open up some ideas you have to create some more interesting advanced functions, or maybe it doesn't and the right time will come along when uh, you just say, hey, a, a function would be absolutely perfect here and one doesn't exist, I'll make it. And what's great about functions is that you can pass them along and share them with the community and everybody can take advantage of the functions that you've created if you have them on GitHub or someplace like that. So let's go ahead and write a function. To write a function, the syntax is actually very similar to writing a mixin. Let's say we're going to write a, uh, a function that just adds two numbers. We could just say add and then in parentheses, uh, we're going to take in the the arguments that this function expects to receive. So we could say, uh, we're, this is gonna accept an A variable and a B variable, okay? Now we wanna say what this function is going to do. Since it's adding these two numbers, we could say A plus B. In fact, if we wanted to add a third, we could say C and just do A plus B plus C. So I'm not quite sure why the code coloring is messed up on this last C, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. So what we can see from this function is anytime we pass three values to add, it's going to add those values up and spit it out. So let's go ahead and do that on this margin left. We no longer want it to be negative 10. Let's say we want it to be add, and we're gonna pass it some values. We're gonna say it's gonna be one comma two comma three and we should be expecting a six to come out of here. So if you'll notice, we have margin left is six. Now you might be wondering, well, we want uh, this to be a pixel value, right? Well, if we want this to be a pixel value, you can actually pass a pixel value into the function. So if we just say one pixel, you notice that this margin left is now six pixels. And likewise, if we have all three of these being uh, a pixel value, the end result is going to be pixel. But what happens if the values that we pass this aren't the same? For instance, if we pass this a percentage and then two pixels, we save it. You'll notice that the unit that is accepting is this percentage. Uh, likewise, if we have, let's say, the middle unit as percentage and this one as a rem, we save it, you'll notice that we're getting this rem value. However, now, because we're uh, adding a percentage, it's adding actual 2%, which is a number, it's 0 0.02. So our value is no longer six and it's 4.02. So if you want this to be a six rem as our answer, we could just get rid of this unit for these other ones entirely and pass it in like that. Now, let's say we want to oh, be able to omit one of these values. Um, we want this to always be three no matter what. Right now, if we try to save this, it's gonna be accepting or expecting three separate values and it's only getting two. So you'll notice that this isn't compiling to anything. It's not changing. If we check out our, our, uh, our terminal here, we're getting a whole bunch of errors. So way we can get around that is by saying in our declaration that we can define this as a, uh, a permanent value. We could say this is going to be equal to three all the time. It's gonna be its default value. So now actually let's make this, so let's see this number change, let's just make it four. And you'll see our value at the end is now seven. But if we wanna do something like overriding that, we would just simply have to uh, declare this in the function here, pass the argument into the function, and it's now overriding this four. And likewise, instead of just hard coding values, you can even hard code with other variables. So you can say that C, if it's not defined, is always going to be the same value as A. So just like that, 
we now have the ability uh, to say that C is going to be equal to A. A is equal to 1, 1, 2, 1 is equal to 4. So this is just a really basic function where we're accepting some values, we're adding them together, and then we're returning the output right here. So let's actually come up with a new function that returns multiple values. Because let's say you have uh, something like a margin, and you're going to want it to be returning multiple values here, and not just not just um, one value itself. So what we can do is create a new function here, and we're just going to call this uh, marge for no reason other than I can't come up with a better name at the current moment. And this is going to accept one value, okay? Now, we're going to return multiple values. We're going to be splitting this variable up into four separate values, okay? And uh, it's going to be determining a margin for a given object. So to do this, let's actually uh, take this function, and I'm just going to... Um, uh, I'm going to get rid of this margin left here, and I'm just going to apply a general margin. So I'm just going to say margin is equal to marge, and I'm going to pass this 10. And it's going to, let's just say 10 pixels. Okay? And now right now, in our body main, it's not going to do anything because the marge function isn't returning anything yet. So if we were to just say A like this, you'll notice that it's returning 10 pixels exactly. However, what happens if we do space and then A again? You notice things get kind of weird. In fact, we have this A colon and then 10 pixels and then two semicolons. So let's try to use something where we can return these values. So before we didn't have to use this return command and this time we're going to want to use it simply because uh, Stylus doesn't really know what to do when we have these multiple outputs. And if we're saying return here, Stylus knows that any variable that comes across here or any value, it's going to want to return it. So for instance, if we say return A space A, save it, the output is now margin at 10 pixels and 10 pixels. Now we can do all sorts of stuff with this. Let's say we wanted the margin on top and bottom to be 10 pixels, but we wanted the left and right margin to be five pixels. We could say something like A divided by two here, and now we have 10 and five, or let's say we want it to be A times 10, Left and right margins are now 100, top and bottom are now uh, just 10. And likewise, we could keep going and say perhaps maybe the bottom margin is going to be A times 2. So then we have 10, 120. And you'll notice that we can just keep stringing along things here and it's going to keep on returning them. And likewise, if we wanted to add a second variable, something like B, we could also just throw B into the mix here and perhaps this is the multiplication values. And now we could say margin 10 pixels, and let's say this is going to be 20 for B. Now what we're seeing here is the value for A, which is 10. Then we see A times 10, and then we see A times 20. And we get all of those values output here, just like this. And you'll notice that it's getting a pixel for all of them because the original value A has a pixel-based unit. Okay, so we've created a function here, and then we've created a function that returns multiple values. Now you can start to see the importance of how functions can be very, very flexible to do all sorts of different tasks for you, but what you haven't seen is the use of things like conditionals and some of the more advanced features that you're able to accomplish with functions. Functions that would be able to accept values and then not only just return multiplications or additions or math with those val values, but be able to analyze them and tell you a little bit about them, like what their unit is and what what their function is and then you can use those properties to conditionally output different things. Things like this are reasons why I love CSS preprocessors. The immediate use might not be totally obvious but the benefits are completely there and it gives you just a ton of ability to create some really cool stuff. 
So in the next few videos, we're gonna just talk about more advanced function stuff. We're gonna show you some of the cooler things with Stylus, and then we're gonna get into some really awesome libraries that exist for Stylus like Nib and Typographic, uh, grid frameworks like Jeet, and uh, just really show you all of these awesome things that you can do using Stylus. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.